they're kind of adorable, right? I mean, there's a level of cuteness to these giant mechanical war machines that I feel like needs to be called out. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to PlayStation Underground. On today's episode, we are playing Lost Sphere, which is coming out to PS4 on January 23rd. Uh, correct? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sam and Neil from Square Enix are joining me to show off this game, which is the second game from Tokyo RPG Factory. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Uh, Thank awesome. you so much for having us. Awesome to be here. Absolutely. Uh, we've seen Lost Fear before, but I but we're gonna let's just start playing. Neil, keep going as we as we get our intros in. But I wanted to give a quick shout out to the fact that you will be able to play this demo on December seventh on PS4 yeah. if you are interested. Correct. Yes. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about Sam. Why don't we start off with saying just general Lost Fear? What does someone need to know just to get a get a grip for this game? Well, I think the first question that kind of comes to mind, and just by looking at this huge overworld, is like, what is this place called? Uh, and as of right now, we we're calling it Guy Terra. So it's actually known as the world of Guy Terra world, where, as you could tell, um, there's places that are lost. Uh, I know we kind of touched upon those points earlier around mm -hmm. E3. So just kind of uh, reiterating a little of the, the point. So the point of the Lost is where uh, basically you have the absence of memory. So what he did here was he manifested a certain landmark back into existence. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the, that's like a key part of the story and the overall theme is sort of bringing back the memories of this world, which has been lost to these strange, vapid sections of the map here. So... Um, also, do we need to discuss, guys, who's doing the voices for who? We're going to do some dramatic readings. Ah, uh, that sounds super fun. <laughs> I, but I call it Dibs, Van. I mean, okay, Van's so super Sam, awesome. Sam is going to be Van. Does, I, don't even, I, I don't even think Van talks. Oh, well, well, that, that's ah, the main point. <laughs> that's the point. I see I what's happened here. Neil, so you, you're, you're kind of creating some spaces here. Is this just giving you more access to the map? Is this creating dungeons? Like, what are we seeing happening? So this actually gives you some benefits in battle. I'll let... Uh, Sam's the the pro at describing the game, so I'll, I'll let him kind of go into more detail. But Sam. as you can the see, designated pro gamer, you are the pro <laughs> of this, the uh, PS4 pro, if you will. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So here, not only does unlocking memories open up a more vaster part of the map, uh, but also grant certain passive abilities. Ah, okay. So uh, I believe he unlocked Idrasil. Uh, is that what you unlocked? Yeah. So. Um, we need to go back and see what that unlocks, but um, there's certain passabilities such as like you're able to, you know, um, induce like you know more critical damage, mm -hmm. or you know able to have um, more critical hit rates, um, things along those lines. Uh, but on top of that, not only are you able to unlock passive abilities for your characters in battle, um, there are certain things I think we touched upon where you're able to engage with certain landmarks to such like you know, able to amass certain items um, such as whether you go fishing some materials like uh, healing pr um, items uh, things that help your uh, different properties in and out of battle it's still super cute i love just watching these little little friends uh, run around on the map so but, uh, pick up shinies does this mean that you have to have a larger view of like how you want to do battle when you're creating you're you know unveiling these parts of the map or is it just going to help you no matter what you choose? So it's really just up to you and on a whim. Like, how does the like kind of larger strategy of of cre you know uh, creating these spaces go? Um, in my personal opinion, being the pro gamer here. <laughs> oh, can, here we go. Well, we, hold is, up. Before this that, is, we this have is Ryan's character. Ryan, I think, has to be a Roman. Can you see that? Who's, who's the road out? is blocked. <laughs> oh, is he, he's British? I didn't, I didn't realize Canada was British. Right. right. I'd love to just force our way straight through and trounce them. But they're putting up a tougher resistance than we expected. I needed more of the text at one time. We're at a standstill. Is, is this me with the huge blonde hair in the front? Okay. I used to have huge blonde hair, but not anymore. So that's perfect. So now I want to be able to go around and attack them where they won't expect it. I kind of feel bad because they have a lot of dust like, in there. And that's why you need us. <laughs> <laughs> is are you, all your European counterparts going to be just miserable with your uh, gonna, accent? Yeah, me. you'll understand when you see it. It's just up above the western cliff. Yep, and he just walks right and off. And he just disappears are, into the sunset. I call this <laughs> on this NPC. Fate brought us together. Maybe you're fated to buy something too. Ooh, Neil, you were practicing for this day, Methodic. forever and ever. Another indirect reference. 
another indirect reference. So, so tell me the battle system. I mean, what are, we haven't quite seen a battle yet, so I'm sure we'll see it in, in a hot minute here. But what kind of system is Lost Sphere based on, and how does it differ from um, I Am Setsuna, the uh, first game in uh, Tokyo RPG uh, Tokyo RPG Factory's library? That's what I wanted oh, to say. So, a lot of the core elements revolve around the whole battle system. So it goes back to your earlier point where you were said. Uh, oh, so how does like these certain landmarks play a part you know, in out of battle? So the cool thing about this game is that your ex your experience through the game is completely unique every single playthrough. Mm -hmm. So you could you know, manifest different landmarks at different spots, and you could customize your experience. So how that how that ties into the battle system is you're able to tailor certain abilities, certain um, I, um, key items to kind of interact with these passive abilities. Um, once he starts getting to the battle. Um, and going through that is uh, much like I am Setsuna, you have the core turn based RPG element, um, but which you're about to see in a hot minute <laughs> after doing this dialogue. The, I'm glad you're using the term hot minute. Oh, here I am again. No, wait, that's not me. I get to voice the bird. <laughs> Does this bird have a voice? <laughs> Squat! S Squat. <laughs> oh, this is you, Sam. Oh, I get it. Your way around is blocked by something that's been lost. You lost your accent. Yeah, that's probably better, though, I think. <laughs> yes, that's why we called on you. We need you to restore that spot. Everybody looks at me. Kanata, is it? You're the key to this mission. If you can't do what... It <laughs> I can't even do the most simple voice <laughs> acting. If you can't do what they say you can, we've got a problem, you hear me? I'll give it a try. All right, well... <laughs> <laughs> going, about, going about my day. <laughs> what what do we do, Kanata? Hey, that was good. There we go. I'm hoping it's like Ragnus that monsters around here have memories of this place. But we won't know until we try taking out some monsters. Oh, no. We have to kill them? Fine. Let's show these guys behind us how it's done. Maybe it'll quiet them down a little. I wanted to be mad. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> too bad. Hey, that man, you were, perfect, you, were waiting, you were waiting too long. Oh, I had to jump in. Oh, man. All right, so here's our first encounter. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit smaller mob, so, but we wanted to kind of jump into the battle itself. So as I mentioned, you have the standard active time battle. Um, all of the classic elements of the traditional JRPGs. Uh, but as you see here, we're introducing a new mechanic where you're able to kind of move about um, your characters in battle to optimize your... I guess DPS, so if those players side. call it, um, <laughs> to, to uh, hit multiple enemies. But obviously, you have characters that um, have a higher DPS on single characters. Um, you also have abilities that have hit multiple characters. So, Van and K Kanada, they're more focused around AoE, while uh, Obaro, he's the guy with the staff. He's more of a mage user. I mean, then again, you can whack monsters with your staff if you like wouldn't be very effective but we all know how that is yes of course and it, were you able to you know restoring these memories it seems like you're using sort of items or fragments in order to restore these sections do you just get those by defeating mobs is that what you were describing before yeah so um, as you progress through the game you're, you're able to amass um, certain memories and as you start amassing these certain memories you're able to um, and you have to use them wisely you know such as like manifesting you know certain landmarks or you have to use them to kind of uh, get through certain points so just here you have a gigantic rock obviously you know they don't have rock climbing gear but so you have to just bust through it full on uh, oh here's Galdra uh, didn't we say something about Gal I'll just leave Galdra's that Galdra's the female of the group Okay. No spoilers. Oh, okay. Is that no spoilers? <laughs> Should we mark this <laughs> video with spoilers? I'm adding Kanata's name to my wish list. As you like, sir. Kanata, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of myself, too, but sometimes, you know. We should be able to destroy, destroy a rock of that size with a Volko suit. Volko suit? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Volko suits are <laughs> super awesome to play with. But uh, we'll see the first application of the Volko suit. Right about after this. We better wear vocal suits from here. Do it. Equip it. Equip yes. it now. So vocal suits are a new mechanic um, Good which <laughs> is introduced in Lost Sphere. Uh, in which our vocal suits, we shouldn't have any trouble crushing rocks in our way. Rock smash. And it'll be easier to fight in our vocal suits, too. <laughs> we just have to be careful of VP. We have, we have now seen Neil's range of voice that he can provide us. Perfect. Whenever we need to conserve VP, all we have to do is take off our suits to fight. 
Van's voice definitely changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you can also use the VP charger to replenish. All right, at this point, I've forgotten which characters <laughs> we're all playing. <laughs> There's too much. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Easy. What is going on? Whoa! Uh, <laughs> so those are the vocal suits. Uh, I know some people probably haven't seen what these awesome suits are. So. Uh, a step up from I Am Set to Nowhere, these are kind of like your, I guess, summons, if you will. Um, so, at the cost of VP in the bottom right corner, as you can tell, we only have 150 vocal suit points. Uh, not only do you use vocal suits to get through certain Vulcan obstacles right. throughout the map, you're, you're also able to use them in battle. So, much like Chrono Trigger, where you're able to kind of utilize two characters. Oh, there we go, we have the standard X Strike. Yeah, yeah. I am set to know. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the might of the Volko suits is not something you just take lightly. They're kind of adorable, <laughs> right? I mean, there's a level of cuteness to these giant mechanical war machines that I feel like needs to be called out. They're adorable until you get to, you know, right there where you have to climb up and take them off. <laughs> they're not they're adorable, not they're super cool. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're cool, God. They're not dolls, they're action figures. Correct. I love, I have to say, probably one of my favorite abilities is uh, Lumina's Palm Beam. Just because you can line up so many enemies at one time. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay there. Well, it's actually, you, could also, damage. you <laughs> could also change the dynamic in battle, such as uh, Kanata. He has ability where you're able to kind of move enemies to different parts of the map, kind of depending on its position. So you could actually combo in hitting a character to a certain spot or depending on the angle, much like kind of like a pool table. Mm. And then you could, you know, do another AO ability with like Lumina to hit, you know, that second hit as a serve as a second hit to the character. Did we see any of that kind of strategy in uh, I Am Setsuna or is that all new to Lost Sphere? Uh, it is actually, the ability to move about in battle is actually uh, one of the new mechanics in Lost yeah. Sphere. Yeah, cool. I know there are certain combos in I Am Setsuna where you're able to gravitate a lot of the characters and then do another AOE AO ability. Mm -hmm. But this one, you kind of you, you actually have the control yourself in battle, which is super awesome. Oh, pick another shot. You shiny. have a limit to the amount that a character can move during battle. Is there like a gauge, or can you just kind of position yourself wherever you want to and map it all out? Yeah, so you're able to position. As you can as, see here, anywhere. <laughs> yep, you can go about wherever you want, wherever the perimeter is. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you'll see later on, there are certain applications to actually uh, more of an invasive strategy as well. Uh, there are certain enemies that have AOE, AOE abilities, so it's best plan that you don't have all your characters at one spot. So what I like to do is have characters at each of the four corners of the map, so they actually have to pick their, choose their targets. Oh no, you're running out of VP, everybody's transforming! Oh, no. Yeah, Vaughn's uh, Japanese voice actor has, I think, a much better thing going on than my yeah, rendition. I love Van. I actually like his weapons a lot. Yeah, um, they look like little floating laser cannons. What, yes. do we, what do we got going on there? So those are actually called bits. bits. Uh, yes, so you're able to, I guess, summon more of them through certain abilities that he has. Uh, Obviously, the more that you have, the more damage that you'll do. Awesome. Uh, he is your range character. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's more of an evasive strategy. I like to kind of put him in the far corner of the map as more of like the uh, uh, range character and hit the enemies from far away. So, you know, he takes the least amount of damage and he hits him. There you go. He hits multiple targets at once. Beautiful. So, uh, as you see in the bottom, though, um, one of the elements that we took from I Am Set's map is the momentum system. Uh, so, the blue circle that has, that circle, circles around the image, yeah, around, uh, around the character port, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it masses the blue orb. So whenever you expend that blue orb by hitting the square button on the PlayStation controller, um, you're able to do more damage. And once, so you're supposed to time it once you hit the enemy to, um, in, to do more damage to them. Oh, the like so, literally, as the action happens on screen, you need to hit the button. Yeah. So rather than okay, you know, so there's a bit of a rhythm element to there it. There is. Ah. So rather than monotonously just watching your character, I don't know, attack the enemy, you're actually a little bit more immersed in the battle system itself, which is super awesome. You're taking a more active role in the battle, Sam. Yeah. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, for me back then, like you know, if you compare it to like you know previous RPGs where you're just like playing the waiting game and watching them <laughs> go about their thing, I'm just like, you know twirling my thumbs, watching them do the whole animation. <laughs> this one is like, you actually have to kind of think through the actual battle itself. Now, Neil, I noticed you're doing some tomfoolery just now. Ah. Did you change your playable character here? Yes. Ah, I wanted okay. Lumina to take the lead. Ah, okay. Kind of okay. needed a break. For who are you? 
Oh wait, is that a female character? I can't tell. <laughs> I, you know, I'll just read normally. We're the Imperial Command. I'm General Aranus. My name will ring out through history. Uh, Imperial Command? Run away! Run away! I'm just apparently voicing all the characters now. I like it. I Resist like it. if you like. In fact, I want you to. So, Aronis seems a little mean. Right? Just a bit? Yeah, so not too much is known around. Uh, no, we actually haven't revealed much about Aronis at this point. So, right. uh, I don't want to spoil I'm going to go with my initial assumption that he's a little mean and may very well uh, be a terrible villain. Who knows? That's for the players to that's, find. That's out. for the players to find out, and for us Ryan to know. To, and Ryan them to, to find speculate. Out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Galdra has probably one of the coolest animations, like in the game, in my opinion. I just also like the, love the, the suit character. of armor. Yeah, uh, Galdra. I mean, why do you have armor on top of armor, right? <laughs> for extra armor. <laughs> extra armor. Yeah. <laughs> you need armor bonuses. I kind of feel bad for these enemies over here. <laughs> Are they a little? Uh, are we a little overpowered now with Galdra in the mix? Yeah. So in this demo, um, you know, just so we the players get a feel for how the you know, gameplay is, uh, they're gonna be facing a few easier enemies. Uh, but um, as you could as later on as the game progresses, you'll face much tougher enemies. So. Uh, it's your knowledge of the battle system that actually plays a very integral part to how you strategize different engagements, and it's, it becomes a very integral part of positioning and a mixture of you know um, utilizing, remembering you have to oh you have to use the blue momentum um, orbs. Um, it also comes to say that you also have to ration your VP um, so you don't expend everything, spend it all one place as they call it, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, so Neil, keep going. I'm going to ask some more philosophical questions here, but with with Lost Sphere, uh, well, let me back up. In I Am Setsuna, I know the Tokyo RPG Factory, the developer, really wanted to convey a sense of melancholy and a sense of remembrance there. Um, is there an overarching theme or a, a tone or a feeling that the developers want to portray with Lost Sphere? Yeah, so there's a sense of urgency in, in that the world is just disappearing around you. I mean, put yourselves in the character in Kanata's shoes, right? You wake up and you're like, oh, shoot, my house is gone. Or, oh, my favorite arcade is just gone, right? Like, you know, how do I go about just restoring the world around me? So not only, you know, are my friends not gone, you know, I actually go about just saving the world. And, and the, the key is people don't really understand why this is happening. Yeah, so there's a whole um, ominous threat that kind of threatens the world of uh, Gaitera. And um, they're just kind of thrown into the mix of like, you know, what's what's going on? We don't know what's going on. All I know is I have this uh, ability to kind of manifest things with memory back into existence. Um, but as they go along the way, they start discovering, you know, they start having this strong bond with each other as they start finding out what is going on in the world. So, uh, it's not an apparent enemy, which is the cool part of this game. You know, you have your, I'm gonna call it like, you know, cliche, you know, good versus evil, but there's a lot more depth to the story that goes beyond just good and evil. It's a much larger picture. I'm just gonna drop that hint that the players have to discover of what's actually going on in the game around them. So. Well said and uh, properly teased. I'm very interested. <laughs> I think at the end of the episode, we're gonna see a boss battle. I don't know how. It's close we are. Yeah, Neil's get indicating that we are going to see it soon. So. Neil just likes fighting the enemies. Um, <laughs> actually, that goes back to um, the vocal suits. So, uh, uh, out of battle, aside from just getting past certain obstacles, uh, you're able to utilize certain abilities of the vocal suits uh, outside the battle. Such as if you have them equipped, uh, you're able to. Uh, zoom past certain mobs undetected ah. uh, without actually engaging in certain battles. Uh, I don't know if you actually do that here. But is that, I mean, would that, wouldn't that hurt you because you're not getting experience? So what, what is the benefit to kind of stealthing your way through uh, uh, an encounter? Yes and no. I mean, at certain points, you know, uh, let's say, for example, for, for me, I love to grind, right? You know, if you like, if you feel like you're at a certain point where you just don't feel the need to just fight any minis anymore, I would just throw in the vocal suit and just run past the mob. You know, I really love getting to the story itself, so it gets me to the next uh, story point. Are we are we feeling a boss fight coming on? Possibly. Possibly. You know, make sure oh. everybody's nice and top. Oh. Pre yeah. boss yeah. battle preparation. I let this is one of my favorite moments in RPGs is when you can just sprinkle a bunch of potions on everyone yep. and get as as prepared as you possibly can. And now I'm turning all those artifacts that we were uh, bringing into the world earlier, the yes. beginning of the demo, now I'm activating those to get a little bit more of a bonus. Ah, very nice. You upgraded your weapons also, right, through that merch? I did. Awesome. 
Please don't resist. Can't you just surrender? We don't want to hurt you. You, you the Empire, you all play for defiling our holy place. Right? Right. 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 <laughs> so Shara is actually another playable character of the group. Uh, what's actually kind of ironic is she's actually more of the uh, healer of the group. <laughs> so she actually has an AOE healing ability, but in this instance, you're actually fighting your own healer. So oh you kind of have to be careful. Terrible. Yeah. You kind of have to be a bit more uh, conservative of your potions and in, um, engagement. So One of your Volko suits has been charmed. Nice. So back to the point of the Volko suit was uh, so yeah so Baro he so his Volko suit's ability is kind of more of an application of his spells. So he has really cool names and stuff we ever give around to him where they do a higher DPS spell abilities. Um, Kanata it focuses around a lot of the co-op um, abilities such as if you have another character with equipped the Volko suits, you're able to use. Um, uh, combo abilities. Target Ray! Uh, Good I ammo! <laughs> summon bits! <laughs> Neil, I want you to summon all the bits. Summon every uh, single bit uh, you can. As many bits as you can. Just flood the screen with bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, there we go. We got one. It's running! Defeated! Take it down! Got him, coach. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't yeah, know so what that is, but it looks really intense. It's a, it's a buff. So some of the vocal um, um, abilities are able to buff, your, uh, buff yourself. So it, it kind of amplifies to what's already seems like overpowered, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, seems like. But I wouldn't take this boss battle lightly. Just when you think that uh, you, you're about to, you know, beat the enemies on screen, she could turn it around right, really, really easily. I personally like Van's vocals suit the best though. Like the whole black and gold. Ah, uh, right on the right side here. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you have a favorite. Um, I actually really liked Galdra's, but yes, this, yay, Neil, well done. We did it. Well done. Nice. Seemed like no big deal for our Neil the Steel it, on wheels. It took a little practice. <laughs> it took a little practice. Yeah, the first few times I, I fought her, she like one shot at my party a couple times. Oh, and yeah, she can be pretty, pretty you look, rough. You made it look effortless, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, you know, when you got skills. Oh, he, he's actually the real pro gamer. I just take the title on sometimes. I see, you know. yes. <laughs> Uh, well, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Awesome. So that any any final thoughts on Lost Fear, which is coming to PS4 January 23rd? Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, so we <laughs> listen to our fans. Uh, they actually they keep asking us, like, hey, you know, do you guys have a physical edition as well or a like, box one? Uh, it is available. The PS4 box is available exclusively on the Square Enix online store. But, however, if people want the dynamic theme, which is a beautiful moon-based theme, uh, they're able to kind of pre-order on the PSN store as well. Ah, so go on over to PlayStation Store and you can pre-order now if you wish, right? Yes. Um, and you can play this demo on December 7th on PS4. Correct. Hit this one. The one we're looking at? This one. The one we're playing? This one. You did, they're going to rip the controller right out of your hands, <laughs> Neil, and they're going to play it uh, for themselves. Voices yeah. come separate. Yes. You voices have, not included. Yeah, we have to call in <laughs> to your party on PSN and do the if, voices. If they... If fans want to voice the characters uh the demo actually does go for a f about i would say about an hour or so right, this is a, actually a chunk of the demo right, so great. they could actually expect a lot more from this well guys thank you so much again thanks thank for you. having, having us awesome. pleasure being here sam and neil we're playing lost fear on ps4 and we will see you next time on playstation underground PlayStation.